The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Josh Ellsworth with Stahl's CAD Cut Direct presenting a Great Garment Graphics webinar. Uh, this one's titled Heat Transfer Film Tour, Understanding the Options Stahl's Has to Offer. We have a ton of content today, so I'm going to get right to it and kind of walk you through uh, some considerations when you're trying to source a heat applied film and when you're trying to understand all the options that we manufacture and sell. Uh, we'll go through a lot of different photos, a lot of different job scenarios today. And this is, uh, we have a lot of content to cover, but I do encourage questions. So if you've been to a webinar before, you know there's a questions box where you can type in your question and I'll uh, see it directly on my screen as will Nicole, who's helping to organize the presentation today. And we'll get to them as we're able. Uh, some things, uh, we usually get started with the poll, and today will be no different, so I can get a, uh, a good view of the audience we have today. So the first poll I'm going to launch is, uh, which of the following heat transfer films, film products, have you used? And you're supposed to check all that apply, so hopefully uh, it's set up right where you can check multiple options. So to check all of those uh, products that you've used before, these are all uh, five stalls products. And about half of you have voted. Some people are still logging in since it's just now uh, past 2 o'clock. So we'll give you a couple more uh, seconds here to log your votes. Mark all the ones that you know that you've used before. And nearly 70% have voted. Five more seconds. All right, and we're uh, up over nearly 80%. So I'm going to close this and uh, go ahead and share the results. So let's see, I'm going to jot these down so I can reference back. So 55% of the audience has used thermofilm. 32% has used the Econoprint. 13% Sport Film Light. 13% Superfilm. And 42%. CAD Cut Premium Plus. Great, and that's out of uh, it's 79 percent that voted. So let me hide those results, and I'll launch our last poll uh, for today, which is has to do with special effect heat transfer films and uh, particular styles. So, which of the following special effect styles have you used out of the three listed there? Have you used glitter materials, reflectives, flock? Please mark all that apply. had a comment or actually uh, never used any. Uh, I, that was to the previous poll, which is fine. You're going to learn all about heat transfer films today. And I'll spend a, a couple seconds here while the votes are coming in to explain the process to catch everybody up who, who may have never used heat applied films before. Um, on this one, you can pick only one, so it's probably going to be a landslide for glitter material, um, which is, which is fine. I'll be able to get a good gauge anyway. So pick the one you've used most if you haven't voted yet. Um, so for those of you that have never used heat transfer films, basically um, it's a really simple workflow. You source a, a roll of heat applied film, uh, typically sold anywhere from one yard up to 50 yard increments, uh, anywhere from 15 inches to 20 inches wide. And you load this roll into a vinyl cutter. Uh, vinyl cutter machines range in price anywhere from $400 to $4,000. Uh, Stalls has a $580 option, which is the GCC cutter. And we also have the Roland GX24, which is uh, about a $1,700 option. So you cut the heat applied film in a mirror image. Uh, text or different types of designs. You'll see various designs throughout the presentation. After it's cut, you weed away the excess and uh, flip it over and press it onto a t-shirt or performance fabric or whatnot. And that's the basic process of heat transfer film. So all the products that you see today will utilize that workflow. And you can look up heat transfer film or heat transfer vinyl on YouTube, and you'll see all kinds of uh, tutorial videos um, which explain the entire process to you. We won't be showing any videos uh, in today's presentation. It's mostly photos and discussion. So with that, uh, with those responses, appreciate that. Let's go ahead and, uh, and get started. Questions are rolling in. All right, that's good. Um, so as we're touring through this, I'd like to, to take a look at it first from the basic materials. We talked about thermofilm, 
uh, Sport Film Life, Premium Plus, Econo Print, Super Film. Those are five choices in the range. There's also some additional products. Uh, we don't manufacture all these different choices just to confuse, it, confuse um, the situation and confuse you as a customer. Uh, really, we have a, a good customer base in all the different products we offer. That's why we inventory and, and sell them in so many different colors. And they all have particular uses. So your particular business model uh, may be one where you use thermofilm a lot. We'll talk about that. Your particular business model may be one where we use uh, Superfilm or Premium Plus a lot. So I just want to teach everybody about the different products and what they can be used for. And we're going to start with some of the toughest to do items. When you look at contact sports fabrics and you look at fabrics that have issues with dye migration, these are the two choices from our lineup that I would recommend. Uh, CAD Cut Thermofilm and CAD Cut Thermogrip. These two products, if I were to press uh, two numbers on a jersey side by side, one out of film, one out of grip, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference on the surface. The actual film is exactly the same on the surface. The only difference on these two products is the actual adhesive that we laminate uh, to the back of it to, um, for applying to different fabrics. So uh, both of them are really good for contact sports. So in particular, uh, football uh, jerseys is what comes to mind first. And thermofilm is uh, just over 200, as is grip, over 200 microns thick, which is double the thickness of any of the other products that were in that first survey. And that really makes them resistant to abrasion uh, ripping, tearing, contact. It's probably the, the most rugged and durable heat transfer film in the world. And it's, it's phenomenal for these contact sports fabrics. So if you're, uh, we'll go through a couple different jersey types and we'll um, kind of quiz you on whether you pick thermofilm or thermo grip for the application. Um, the other key thing is most of these jerseys uh, for contact sports are manufactured with uh, nylon or polyester. Polyester has an issue called dye migration sometimes where the uh, dyes from the jersey actually want to bleed out through the print. That's why if you've ever screen printed numbers before, you use a low bleed ink um, so the dyes from the jersey don't come through the white number as you see the, the number 86 and the player making the tackle so the black uh, jersey doesn't come through the white number. Thermofilm and Thermogrip with their thickness have great opacity. And opacity uh, just means the ability to stay like a clean white or uh, block any dyes from coming through. So th th it's not like a no-bleed application to where if you press it on to like a fully sublimated motocross jersey that it wouldn't bleed, but for the case of uh, polyesters and uh, traditional dye migration that you see out there um, on stuff that isn't fully sublimated, thermofilm and thermogrip both do the job, so they're great uh, solutions for that. Now let's look at a couple different types of uh, sports jerseys and see which product you would pick. So this is uh, one supplier of team uniforms, uh, Game Gear, which the website is uh, cobblestones.com. Um, I like this brand a lot. Um, they have some really nice fabrics. And this is just a style I randomly grabbed from their website and used in a, a presentation about a year ago. Um, so I just went and grabbed the same style as an example. So if you look down through the description, if I'm sourcing this jersey for a team, um, I can look at, you know, we're, we're seeing here, let me grab my writing tool, we're seeing we have a 100 denier nylon uh, pro mesh body for colors. Basically that means like the orange color is going to be a nylon. If I order a white jersey, it's not going to be a nylon, it's going to be a polyester in this case for this jersey style. Um, I can see that it has a 70 denier nylon dazzle cloth yoke. Um, so that means uh, the yoke of the jersey um, is, is not this main body uh, print area. So the dazzle cloth, as you see, is going to be up here if you do any TV numbers on the shoulder or if you do the name across the back of the jersey, that's going to go on the nylon dazzle portion. Um, so let's, for, for a moment, rule out the mesh and rule out the dazzle. Let's not worry about that. Let's look at the keyword here in both of these, and that is nylon. This is a nylon-based fabric. It's a football jersey, therefore it's going to be a contact sport. What product would you pick for this application? You can go ahead and type it into the question box if you know the answer. Grip, 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 great. Yeah, thermo 
Thermogrip is the answer. Um, thermofilm is a polyester application. Thermofilm is a little better priced than Thermogrip, but in this case, I'm dealing with the nylon fabric. I need to use Thermogrip because it has the extra adhesive for nylon, and it's durable and rugged. So let me look at one additional style. Here we have a football jersey from uh, company A4. Uh, A4.com. They're known for their performance fabrics as well. We'll see those here shortly. But if I look at this jersey, um, the top description line, 100% denier, uh, 100 denier, 100% polyester, uh, Trico mesh body. Also a 70 denier, 100% polyester dazzle shoulder uh, for the TV numbers and sh uh, shoulder inserts and sleeve fabric. Um, so I can see also it looks like there's a 10 ounce, 88% nylon, 12% spandex side and underarm panel. So that's going to go across the side of the jersey and underneath the arm area. I'm probably not going to print those, but if I were going to print those, I would need to pay attention to that. So on this particular jersey, somebody already typed the answer for me, uh, you would use thermofilm because it's polyester base. Uh, can I use thermogrip on this jersey as well? The answer is yes. Thermogrip has the extra adhesive, so not only will it apply to nylon, it will also apply to polyester. Um, so someone may say, why not just stock Thermogrip? And some, some people choose to uh, just stock that, but you are going to overpay per square foot um, over Thermofilm. So you can choose to hold two inventories, one for poly, one for nylon, or if you know your vendors and who you source uh, jerseys from, which a lot of people do, you can pick a supplier that just offers polyester or just offers nylon and then uh, choose to go that way with your core product that you inventory. But in this case, yes, I would need to use Thermofilm. Next, let's look at Teamwork Athletic, um, another popular manufacturer. Here we're looking at a steel mesh football jersey, polyester steel mesh body, and colored shoulder inserts with two-ply dazzle shoulder yoke. So it's not abundantly clear. I know it's polyester for the body, but I would probably make a phone call to my rep over at Teamwork and say, okay, you have, you have a two-ply dazzle shoulder here, but it doesn't reference whether it's polyester or nylon. Uh, just because the body of the jersey, uh, the mesh part, is a polyester doesn't mean that they couldn't use nylon uh, dazzle for the actual name portion. So it's important to understand whether you're dealing with two polyester fabrics here. And in that case, I'd use thermofilm. Or if, uh, you know, obviously if it's a nylon dazzle, then I can split between film and grip since they have the same finish. Or I can choose to just use grip for the whole thing, thermo grip. Okay. Um, I'm just going to address one question that came up here. As I said, type them in and I'll stop and answer them as I go. Uh, this particular person has applied red film, can't remember which, I think it was thermofilm to a black shirt. The red film just wasn't as vibrant on the black shirt. I wonder if it is like screen printing and needs a white film underneath. Uh, with heat transfer films, you should never need a uh, white base underneath for opacity. It really... I'm not sure if it would have been thermofilm. I, I doubt it because thermofilm is pretty opaque and a, a nice bright red. So possibly, you know, you used a, a very thin red film or one with a, a really matte finish or that doesn't have great opacity, and you're getting the color of the black shirt coming through. But in the case of thermofilm, you know, you don't need a back or it'll be bright red. You won't have those issues. I'm sure of that. Okay. So moving on, that covers a lot of the, um, the, the contact sports, and that's really where thermofilm and thermogrip shine and do very well. They have other applications, as you'll see, um, but that's where they, they do best is on those contact sports. That's what they're built for. Now let's look at the performance fabric category. When I look at our uh, heat transfer lineup for performance fabrics, uh, the first one that jumps out, which is why it's in a larger font size, is CAD Cut Premium Plus. Now this is our newest heat applied film. Uh, it's designed with uh, really good stretch and rebound. It's also very thin and soft on a performance fabric, which is what most people would want on a performance fabric. Also, I don't want to rule out that there's other choices here. I kind of put the top three. Uh, the next choice in my mind would be the CAD Cut Super Film, which is just as thin as the Premium Plus and has just as much stretchability. Uh, the price point's just a little higher than Premium Plus. Um, also, in my opinion, it's a little bit more difficult to apply down to the garment uh, as far as the production workflow, and that's a consideration as well. 
Also, you have CAD Cut Gorilla Grip 2, which if you're a Loyal Stalls customer, we've had Gorilla Grip 2 in the lineup for some time. It's a two-step application, so it's a little more difficult to work with. Uh, but the adhesive on it is superior, and it also has good stretch and rebound as well. So these are my three main choices for performance fabrics. And let's look at some different performance fabrics to pick from these products. The first example that I'll show you was applied with Premium Plus. This is just a simple uh, compression uh, fabric uh, from Nike, and it's a polyester based. You can see a black garment and also a red garment. Um, in this particular case, uh, since it's polyester, uh, Premium Plus works just fine. Now, if the polyester poses a bleeding issue with dye migration, the Premium Plus is very thin. It won't block the migration. So what I would suggest doing on jobs like this when you're dealing with performance polys is to take one garment and incorporate it into your cost and make it a test garment. Press one shirt, leave it sit for 24 to 48 hours, and come back and see if the dyes are bleeding from the garment through the print. Of course, I can just use thermofilm and not worry about it, but remember, thermofilm is nearly twice as thick, and it doesn't have the same stretch and rebound. So if I want to give the customer the best possible look and performance, I'm going to choose Premium Plus for this. Now, if the migration happens, then I'm going to have to inform the customer that, in this case, I'm going to have to use thermofilm for the application. Ideally, you would find a vendor for performance fabrics, um, a supplier, where you don't run into a lot of unstable dyes in the fabrics, and you can always use the softest, most stretchable option. Okay. Moving along, I'm going to look at a couple um, uh, different performance fabric manufacturers, a lot of the same companies we highlighted before. Uh, this particular garment is 100% Visa polyester. Um, it's one of the loose fit styles of shirts, so I don't necessarily need the stretch and rebound feature. Um, so once again, I can use Premium Plus here, or if it has a dye migration issue, I can use Thermofilm. Although it will feel a little heavier on the garment, uh, this garment doesn't have stretch and rebound, so I really don't need that feature of Premium Plus. So that would be uh, my choices. Yes, you can use nearly any product in our lineup on this polyester garment. I'm simply recommending what I think will be the best uh, two options as far as Premium Plus for the look and the feel. Uh, but yeah, I could use you know Sport Film Light, I can use Econo Print, Super Film, almost everything applies to polyester. Um, good, good comment came up on performance fabrics, how do you avoid the square press mark from the heat press? That's the other reason I really like Premium Plus is, is because it applies at a very low temperature. Um, I can actually apply Premium Plus at uh, like 300 degrees or in in select cases, I can drop it down to 280 degrees and increase the time. And uh, really what you're seeing is a heat press mark on the shirt. And uh, that's probably um, from heat onto the garment and or pressure. So the ideal thing is to choose a material that applies with a, a low melting point on the adhesive like Premium Plus. So I don't need a lot of time underneath the heat press or a lot of temperature. The next garment I see here is from A4 again. Once again, uh, you're, you're saying, okay, this is a team jersey. Well, performance fabric just isn't limited to performance wear, you know, performance compression garments and T-shirts. I want to make the point here that um, it's not just simple to say use, you know, thermofilm for team uniforms. Um, although that would work in almost every case, if somebody has a basketball jersey, where it's a performance fabric and it's not a, uh, a mesh. Basketball isn't really a high contact sport uh, where it's going to meet abrasion. In this case, I can use Premium Plus and it will be just fine. It's going to give me a lighter feel on the jersey and the team will probably like it better. Um, also, if you see some new stylings of jerseys, you start to get into these compression fabrics. So here's a compression garment from A4. It's 80% poly, 20% spandex. Once again, Premium Plus, just fine on this particular fabric. Now something I want you to pay attention to is if you look at the logo on this particular design, there are select cases um, when you look at a product like Premium Plus, um, if you don't have a, a fresh blade in your cutter and you don't have a, a good brand of cutter, you may have issues uh, completing fine detailed cuts. So there are limitations of products as well when you look at how much detail you can cut. We'll talk about that here momentarily. So I just want you to keep this particular 
uh, logo and size of font in your mind, uh, and we'll cover that a little bit later. So here's a good question. Um, look at this garment. Once again, it looks like the same compression fabric we saw on the previous slide, but this one's from Cobblestone, so a different manufacturer than A4. And on this particular one, it's comprised of 82% nylon, 18% spandex. This particular garment, it's highly unlikely that it will migrate. Yes, spandex is a polyester-based fabric, so there is a small percentage of polyester in this fabric, but it's not like, you know, it's 80% polyester. In this case, it's 82% nylon. Nylon doesn't have, it, it's not manufactured in the same way where it has dyes that are going to migrate. So I probably can just not worry about dye migration with the, with the nylon garment, a garment that's primarily nylon. So one option is if you don't want to worry about dye migration, you can just source from a company like Cobblestones that uses primarily nylon in their constructions. Uh, yes, nylon is more expensive than polyester, but if you want to deliver a premium look and premium durability on your fabrics um, and the, be the best looking heat apply film, you can source a nylon based uh, supplier of performance wear rather than having to mess with polyesters and all that potential of dyes migrating. Uh, premium Plus will work for most nylons, so I would go uh, with Premium Plus. If I know I source from cobblestones, I'd do one test run to make sure I'm going to get durability here. Um, yes, you can use Superfilm or Gorilla Grip as well. They are recommended for nylon. Okay. Uh, before I jump to the next slide, I'll just answer a question. We screened some jackets, and we we're having a problem with the black of the jacket. It's migrating through the yellow imprint. Can we CAD over the yellow imprint to cover our original screen printing? Uh, yeah, if you wanted to use thermofilm on top of uh, screen printed ink, um, if the jacket's migrating, I don't see an issue with that. It's just going to be a matter of aligning the graphic and sizing it appropriately to repair the mistake. Um, aren't there some nylons that can't take heat pressing? Um, we'll talk about tough to do fabrics, tough to do nylons momentarily. And you really only run into an issue when we talk about uh, different coatings, such as waterproof coatings, that uh, kind of block or um, limit the effectiveness of the adhesive. OK. So here's, uh, I just want you, last example, I believe, here of um, a performance fabric. This one, once again, 78% nylon, 22% spandex. And notice, this one has four-way stretch. So a trend now is uh, the, the really tight-fitting um, compression style jerseys. So if you follow football, uh, Nike Pro Combat uniforms and college football have this uh, compression fit to them. If you follow basketball, uh, last year their, their uh, basketball jerseys um, for the University of Syracuse and also for the U.S. Olympic team, they had a uh, compression fit to them. So it's just the style. The tops are going to a compression fit. Um, so it's not a mesh fabric. It's just a compression fabric. And in this case, I would use Premium Plus. Um, you see these uh, compression fabrics used a lot, especially with uh, volleyball uniforms. And just another manufacturer. I don't think I need to go through the whole example here again, but Badger Sportswear is another manufacturer of uh, garments uh, that you can use. Okay, there's some questions uh, coming in. I'll, uh, I'll jump back to some of the, the first few questions towards the end of the presentation. Okay, so tough to do fabrics. So we talked about uh, contact sports fabrics. We talked about performance fabrics. Uh, now we need to talk about tough to do fabrics. Notice I'm not talking about t-shirts at all yet, but that's our next section. Uh, but I'd, I'd prefer to start with some of these uh, tougher to do fabrics that you have more challenges with. So when you talk about tough to do fabrics, this is uh, a lot of the fabrics you see in promotional products um, like bags, um, such as polypropylene, where it has a very uh, low melting point where the bag will actually melt. So these are like the recyclable uh, bags you see in the grocery stores. Um, you also talk about uh, outerwear, uh, jackets, um, can koozies, umbrellas, uh, things like this. 
Uh, the good news is when you talk about tough to do fabrics, uh, there's a different life expectancy on these fabrics. I don't know, uh, people aren't washing their jackets as much as they wash their team jersey or their t-shirt. Uh, people aren't washing umbrellas. Uh, they're not washing can koozies. Uh, they're not washing bags. So the majority of the items that are constructed of these tough to do fabrics, the good thing is that you don't need the, the lifetime, the 50 wash cycle durability like you need for athletic wear and t-shirts. Um, so for that reason, CatCut Premium Plus does a really nice job on the tough to do fabrics, mostly because it's flexible uh, temperature range. Um, also, Gorilla Grip 2 has been a, ma a mainstay in this category, and a lot of people trust it uh, for tough to do fabrics because it has a nylon adhesive on it as well. Um, so when you're talking about um, an item with a waterproof coating, I have no doubt that almost any product we have will stick. It's just a matter of if it's a jacket, you'll probably want to go to uh, Premium Plus or Gorilla Grip 2, um, so you make sure you get the, the wash durability. I'd put a wash durability of, say, 15 to 20 washes for a jacket versus $50 or 50 washes for a jersey. And here's an example of Premium Plus on a, uh, a polyester-based windbreaker. Um, and yeah, for the person that had the question about the screen printed image, I'm sorry that it's a little impersonal, but I'm not getting the names with the questions. Um, but whoever had that question, yes, you can. Uh, I would recommend using thermofilm because if it had a dye migration issue before, thermofilm will stop that migration. Okay. And uh, last but not least in our fabric marketplace is cotton and polyester. And once again, this is the most common. This is the easiest to do. And you can see the recommendation is pretty much any product. At this point, it comes down to what product do I have on hand for my other applications that I can repurpose uh, for my t-shirt business. Uh, what do my graphics look like? Do I need a material that handles fine detail? Do my customers demand something that's extremely soft on a t-shirt? Is there such thing as too soft? Let's step down through the different choices and let me give you a rundown of that. Okay, so if you follow along here, the first thing we know is CAD cut thermofilm, yes, it'll work on cotton or cotton polyester blends, but is a little thicker uh, finished result than some of the other products. Thermogrip would just be way um, expensive to put on a t-shirt. I mean, this is, uh, it's, it's thicker and expensive, so thermogrip on t-shirt would probably be a waste of your money, um, in my opinion. Thermofilm, great, uh, it's just a little thicker, and, uh, but thermogrip, uh, definitely not. Uh, can I just get it? If somebody, if you guys can still hear me, type in a yes. I just got a, a notification from GoToMeeting. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, the uh, the next one I want to talk about is uh, Premium Plus, which we've been talking a lot. And uh, yeah, this is a great product. Looks great. It's just the right thickness to where it has a nice combination of a soft feeling. Uh, but it's thick enough to where it's not going to have a, uh, an issue with wrinkling um, like Superfilm does uh, when it's laundered. Uh, but the only kind of Achilles heel here is it's, you can't do extremely fine detail is uh, basically the market feedback that we got on Premium Plus. Um, I can do fine detail here with my rolling cutter uh, with a fresh new blade, but when we put it out to the market with all these different styles of cutters, different blades and different lives of blades, um, we just realized that, that it's not ideal for the finest of detail. But if you're not doing extremely fine detail, meaning like uh, quarter-inch text, um, then I think Premium Plus is a good all-purpose choice. Uh, Superfilm, um, in my opinion, is just too thin uh, when you launder this product on a T-shirt. Um, it's so thin, it's only like between 60 and 80 microns thick. Um, so it's about a third of the thickness of thermofilm. What happens is the garment, the cotton garment shrinks, even if it's pre-shrunk, it still does a little shrinking, and then you get a wrinkled or puckered appearance throughout your super film. The film isn't thick enough to hold up on these uh, garments. If you're doing a really thin women's garment, then it may be a good choice, but um, not for the thicker, beefy standard tees. Um, Gorilla Grip 2 would probably be an overspend. Um, it's you know it's more expensive and it's more labor intensive with the two step process so probably not a good choice for cotton and cotton poly blends um, but if you were in a pinch and you needed white material and you had Gorilla Grip 2 on the shelf sure you can use it you got to get the job out today um, Econo Print uh, we've had this product in the lineup for a long time it's um, doesn't have a sticky back at all so you definitely can't do fine detail 
Um, it'll work on t-shirts, but won't allow you to do the fine detail. Uh, most people would prefer the uh, features of Premium Plus over the Econo print. And Sport Film Light is a, it's a really good all-purpose product. We haven't talked about it much because it's kind of, it's not the stretchiest product to where it's going to be better than Premium Plus for performance wear. It's not a thick, rugged product where it's going to be better for thermofilm than thermofilm or thermogrip for contact sports, but it's a good, pro good all-purpose product. It has a pretty good thickness to it, but it's, uh, still feels pretty soft on a t-shirt, but not as nice, as nice as Premium Plus. But it's not as stretchy, so it allows me to do a little better detail. So if I'm looking for just a good all-purpose product to use across every category, uh, Sport Film Light would be one of those um, that I can use across every category. And I, you know, 13% of you have used Sport Film Light. I might suggest ordering a small roll of Sport Film Light and trying it um, to see what you think, especially if you're doing fine detailed stuff. Um, if Premium Plus won't work for you because you're doing fine detailed stuff, then Sport Film Light's going to be that product that hits the price point, and it's going to be not as soft, but it's going to be at least close in the same ball game as Premium Plus. Uh, fashion Film would be the last option. Uh, this product's soft. It's, it's pretty nice. Um, the backing's very sticky, and so I can do the utmost detail with Fashion Film if I want to cut really fine pinhead uh, points on you know dots of eyes and designs or really small left chest logos. Um, I can do a little more detail than I can with Sport Film Light, but I think Sport Film Light will do everything you need it to. But uh, Fashion Film, that sticky backing works, works against you when you get the larger designs. So yeah, it'd be great to have one product that just works for everything, but there's always, always going to be trade-offs. So if I try to cut a name and number combo or a large design out of Fashion Film that has a really large pool area when weeding, it's going to be pretty difficult to weed because it has a very sticky backing. So hopefully, uh, you know, that doesn't muddy the waters for you and, uh, and bring any more confusion. Let me, if, it, if it has, let me try to clear it up and give you a recommendation on inventory, what to stock. My suggestion, open for debate, because people that are familiar with the materials have different suggestions. Um, but here is what I found uh, from talking to different customers and getting their experience. I would stock thermofilm or thermogrip. Um, I don't think you need to stock both. Um, find out what blank garments you're sourcing primarily and put one of these products on the shelf. If you source from a polyester-based supplier, get thermofilm. If you source from a nylon-based supplier for you know, your football jerseys, get thermogrip. Um, if you just want to be safe all around, pay the little extra and just get thermogrip. Um, but stock that for your contact sports. Get premium plus for all your performance fabrics and t-shirts. Um, the only catch to this is if you're going to do extremely fine detail design, maybe you need to additionally stock Sport Film Light as well for your high detail designs in a lesser quantity. Um, and then the last uh, piece is uh, stock your special effects as needed. And I'm going to give you guys a time to, to take a deep breath, uh, gather your thoughts because we just finished the basic films and now I'm going to step you through special effects. back and watch it, but uh, for those of you that are experienced, I'm sure you're keeping right up and you know, still feel free to ask questions. Give you guys a couple seconds to ask some questions. I'll take a two-minute break here while I'm looking back through them. Uh, we have a question here about combining different films where temperatures vary. Which temp do you go with, the higher or the lower one? Um, good question. Usually I go with the higher setting. Um, almost always, uh, because what happens is that higher setting is there because that film requires that higher temperature to reach the melting point of its adhesive. If you don't reach the melting point of that film's adhesive, then you really uh, compromise durability and you're putting you know, the, the durability of the garment at risk. Usually most materials that can be applied at a lower temperature can also go up slightly or go up in temperature. Um, so I would uh, err on the side of using the higher temperature. Um, use glitter three times from X supplier, ruined two garments with it. Worked once. I am interested in trying yours. Um, great. We'll go over glitter here in a second. And that's it. Uh, one more question. Are there films you would not combine because of the temp range? Um, I 
can't think of any films I wouldn't combine because of the temp range. The only thing um, that I would be careful of is uh, any products that we recommend not for layering, uh, such as the glitter material you'll see momentarily. There's one style you can't layer. Um, also, any PVC-based product, uh, which you can see on the tech specs on our website. You'll see if it's a polyurethane composition, um, it's fine for layering. If it's a PVC, PVC com composition, then I wouldn't recommend layering. Uh, but most of our products, I think nearly all of our products are polyurethane based. Okay, so let's roll through special effects and show you some different choices there that are going to energize your sales. First, we have two glitter products. We have a smooth finish glitter, and we also have a textured glitter called CAD Cut Glitter Flake. The smooth finish glitter can be layered one on another. The textured glitter can be used as a foreground, but you can't apply anything over it. Um, so you can't use the textured glitter as the background. Here's an example of the glitter flake in the colors uh, pink, silver, and gold. There's another example of it in pink. This is that bling look and uh, this product selling like crazy. Uh, we're actually on back order in a, a few colors and expecting uh, to finish manufacturing those and replenish soon. So if you have an order with it, with us, thank you, and we'll be getting them out soon, but uh, this is available online, and you can see all the color choices. You can see here where we've uh, combined it uh, with another material, and I didn't make this shirt, but I wouldn't recommend. This probably shows you exactly what I wouldn't recommend. You can see the little part of the M that's layering over the uh, hand on the glitter flake. Um, that piece of the design is uh, at risk for peeling up when laundered, so I would just be careful with that. Um, you can see they use the white gloss material, which we'll talk about later. Uh, if you wanted to do this design with the layering, you could have cut a little piece out of the glove here in the glitter flake, so this inlays rather than overlapping directly. Here's another uh, sample of gold, great for spirit wear. There's a good way to do a two-tone look without having to overlay them. And here's the smooth glitter. Now, the smooth glitter can be layered. Um, it's also uh, quite a bit easier to see the cut lines and weed, um, but it doesn't stand out as much. It's not that much of a, a bling effect as the glitter flake. But for production purposes, it's really nice. And uh, the fact that you can combine uh, and layer. But you can see with the smooth glitter, like this is the black color, you have the uh, silver glitter flake combined within the film, and then it has like a polyurethane top coat, um, so you don't feel the texture of the glitter at all. Both of those products are available at CADCutDirect.com. The next special effect category that does well are the metallics and foil-like finishes, and for this we have three products. We have CADCut Electric, which uh, Fashion Film Electric, which is great um, durability. Uh, we have CADCut Metallic 2. Uh, in silver and gold, and uh, some additional colors now since I created this uh, slideshow uh, that has a mirror-like finish. And then we have the CAD Cut Hologram, which has the holographic high sparkle finish. Uh, electric is by far your mo most... ...more of like a uh, foil durability, uh, which you really should hang dry them in the last, uh, you know, a dozen to two dozen washes before they start to break down. And here's an example of the there's a
Welcome to GoToWebinar, web events made easy. Cutters we sell, and also the at a glance application instructions. And you can click on tech specs, so you can see uh, you know stretch and rebound ratings, uh, thicknesses, whether it's CPSA certified, and uh, washability uh, ratings. So that's all available at CADCutDirect.com. Uh, the next special effect is glossy, and this gives you a patent leather-like finish. Here we've done silver, white, and black all together on one shirt. Give you a close-up of that. These are really good for tone-on-tone -tone looks. Um, so putting, you know, pink on a pink shirt. There's black on a black shirt. There's red. Welcome to GoToWebinar, web events made easy. The lights were turned out, so let's show you that. Here we can see the regular glow look. It glows a true white, and when you turn the lights out, it gives you the lime glow. Here's that shirt we saw earlier, and let's look at it with the lights turned out. So it's a really nice bright glow. Actually, if you take a blue, uh, they have the blue laser pointers now, and this is really popular with kids or with people that go out to clubs. Um, you can take a, a piece of the glow of the dark, apply it to a shirt, um, and then if you leave it out of the light so it like loses its glow properties, so turn the shirt inside out and put it in a drawer or hang it in the closet inside out, um, when they wear it, they can take that blue laser pointer and they can actually write uh, on each other's shirts, and it'll show up and it'll glow for a, a set period of time after they take the laser pointer and write on each other's shirts. Here is Glow combined with uh, CAD Cut H2O out of Superfilm, which we'll talk about shortly. Okay. So uh, the next thing is if you want to look for dimension out of material, we have Flock and also Pebble Puff. Um, I like Flock because it has the uh, fuzzy felt-like finish, um, so it goes really good on hooded sweatshirts. Um, also does nice on T-shirts, but I really like it for uh, fall and winter apparel. Um, likewise, Pebble Puff, I like it for the same reasons. Um, I also like to put Pebble Puff on the bottom of like a sock application to make a non-slip surface. I made some socks for my daughter about a year ago, and um, she grew out of them by now. But, uh, you know, we probably wore them on her between the six pairs we did, you know, once a week. And, and they lasted, you know, they've probably been through a, a dozen washes with no breakdown, plus her running around the house with them. Uh, but let's look at flock. With our CAD cut flock, you can actually layer it, which is a unique feature. So here's some two color flock designs. Here's flock on top of reflective. So it's all about combining materials. That shows you a little bit about the dimension of flock. You can see how it's standing off of the t-shirt there with this camera angle. Uh, flock is a good alternative to embroidery. Uh, if you don't have embroidery uh, capabilities, but you still want to sell um, and give that embroidered look for left chest logos and things for corporate wear um, and promotional items like for this uh, Golf Pro Shop. Uh, you can use Flock for left chest logos. There's a close-up of that. You can see the type of detail we're able to achieve. And this is Pebble Puff. Uh, you'll see a close-up here of Pebble Puff. This particular material, it starts flat. When you press it, these actual pebbles raise up underneath the heat press, so it gives you a really good, uh, cool uh, dimensional look. Yes, you can layer a CAD cut flock on CAD cut flock to answer the question that just came through. Here's pebble puff on top of reflective, so it does really good uh, when you're combining it with other materials as well. And before I get to reflective, uh, we had a question, how do you know uh, what vinyl has a sticky back? Does it say in each description? And the answer is yes. If you go down back to the website, you'll see um, carrier and the zoom view. This says pressure sensitive frosted carrier. So pressure sensitive means sticky. So in reflective materials, and we're coming uh, close to the end here, um, we have uh, a smooth, uh, just standard reflect material. We have a fashion reflect um, that has some different uh, colors available in it. And then we have the 3M Scotchlight Reflective, which is the uh, ANSI certified product. It's the most popular. 
So this is good for uh, anybody that would be working that uh, needs that, uh, meet that retro-reflective standard, uh, roadside work crews, um, even for uh, safety for this uh, pizza delivery guy or the paramedic. Um, towing company that would be out along the side of the highway. Uh, anything for running or cycling, just to give you some market ideas on how you can start uh, using and selling reflective to grow more sales in new markets. Um, those are some of the things you can do re with reflective. Once again, you just cut it, weed it, and heat apply it. There's endless choices. And then uh, the last one I want to talk to you about is um, CAD Cut Superfilm which we know we can use Superfilm for stretch fabrics uh, is a choice that we talked about before. But you can also do a unique technique with this product that we call CAD Cut H2O, or you'll see it noted on our website as CCH2O. And with this particular technique, you cut it just like a heat applied film, but you follow a different set of heat press instructions. And it basically heats the material up so hot, when you peel it, the actual film releases with the carrier, and just a print of the film stays behind. So basically the adhesive and the colorant and the film stay behind onto the shirt. Now this process doesn't have opacity, so the color of the garment impacts the color of the print. But if you're familiar with water-based screen printing or that super soft look that's popular in retail, you can achieve it with this uh, super film and this CAD Cut H2O technique. So let's show you some photos of that. There's a close-up. Um, the other thing you can do with this technique is if you turn up the pressure on your heat press, you can get a really good uh, color saturation, so a really clean black. But in this case, when I lightened the pressure on my heat press and pressed it, I got more of a distressed look where I get, um, you know, some no print areas or, um, you know, a, kind of this light where you see the yellow coming through the design. Um, when you look at this part of the design, if you can see my cursor there, that was cut out of the film. That didn't happen by the application. But the areas that you see where it looks like kind of a half print, that was from uh, lightening the pressure. Here I used, uh, I needed this big uh, shield on the back of this design. So rather than just putting a big block of film on the shirt and making it heavy, I used the CAD Cut H2O technique in black, which uh, you have to feel this to believe it. And it just, you know, feels like part of the shirt if you close Uh, I put flock and electric on top afterwards. So that's the, the other two products. Here's a close-up view. You can see the fibers of the shirt and how it blends right in. Extreme close-up. Here's a, another design we did. We'll show you a close-up so you can see, you know, the H2O is the, uh, the copper color. And I think this was probably the cream color or the Vegas gold color in the brown shirt. Here's an example of the original wash, which is the full pressure. You get a nice clean black versus a very light pressure where you get a faded out black. And burgundy is the other color we used with the same pressure adjustments. This is pressed at 400 degrees, so you want to make sure that your shirt isn't heat sensitive. Here's uh, one of our sales reps. Uh, when we first did this process, he was excited about it. He made himself an Iron Maiden shirt. Um, so here he did the original print, and then he actually took the design after he pressed it, just a single design, and he cut out uh, the Iron Maiden word, and he pressed it onto the back of his shirt. So he reused the same piece twice. It just gives you a more faded out print. And then he pressed the logo up on the shoulder area. So he made a little more use out of that design. And here's some stuff customers sent in. Out of our whole range of products, uh, for those of you that do rhinestones, this H2O is the only heat applied film that you can press rhinestones directly on top of uh, without compromising the durability of the rhinestone. Unfortunately, uh, the other options in everybody's heat applied film range that I know of out there, uh, they're not compatible with rhinestones unless you cut the little holes out of the film so the rhinestone places um, and adheres to the shirt, not the film. Um, this is one example from a customer where he did, he took a customer that wanted this basic design and says, I am not your television. He showed it in regular film, and then he did an H2O one uh, beside of it, and the customer ended up going for the H2O one because they wanted the super soft look. 
Um, yes, the films will work on heavier textures like uh, PK uh, polos. Um, the last method for the Iron Man shirt was H2O, uh, CAD Cut H2O utilizing a super film product. H2O is just the application technique. Okay. So that's hard to believe. I actually, I think there were like 77 slides in this show, which is the most I've ever done in a presentation, and it only took 51 minutes. Um, I'm going to stay on and answer some more questions for, you know, as long as they come in, another 10 minutes maximum. Um, we'll have another webinar, which is Heat Press Roundup, presented by Stephen Jackson from uh, Imprintables Warehouse. That will be Thursday, September 22nd at 2 o'clock. You can uh, register at greatgarmentgraphics.com. For those of you that want to log out now, feel free to. Uh, if you want to stay and ask questions for 5 or 10 minutes, I'll stay on and answer them. Um, Question, uh, do you have a link to H2O or video? Uh, let's take you over to that. If it's still live, if you go to stalls.com slash cch2o. No, hold on. Let me move my question box. Um, I'll find it here. Just give me one second. So if we go to stalls. I go to my heat transfer material. I'm thinking if I click on the Superfilm product, it'll be there. Let me check. Superfilm. There's the instructions for how to do it, but I know there's a, a video. Here we go. If you click on, uh, if you go to the Superfilm product and click on the Videos tab, pretty simple, huh? <laughs> you can go down, scroll down through the videos that feature Superfilm, and one of those is the H2O promo video. Then you'll have an H2O technical tips and tricks. Um, then you'll actually see me make that um, shirt with the shield and the lion on it um, on video too. So that's available. Okay, uh, some other questions coming up here. Why do some products say pressure sensitive carrier when that stickiness varies? It's misleading. Premium plus to be specific. Um, that's fair. Uh, we probably need to um, explain a little more uh, exactly how sticky the carrier is because some of them do have a, a very low tack where some have a more high tax. So appreciate the feedback, and we'll definitely work on that. Thank you. Um, I think that's it for the questions. No more questions, guys? Oh, sometimes the, the color offerings, uh, the colors do vary from film to film. So you definitely want to order your swatch books from us and the various films that you like and, and check out the finish of the films when you're combining to make sure, you know, if you combine a matte with a semi-gloss, is it going to look good or not? Will polyester and nylon react the same when, when put on neoprene? Um, I'm not sure I understand, but neoprene, like in, in like a can koozie or something, uh, if it's, I think neoprene's a polyester base, if I remember correctly, and so you do have the risk of dye migration, but almost every product we have will work on like a neoprene can koozie. Um, it's once again, you want to test it for migration. Um, in the case of a koozie, I would probably just use thermofilm um, because they're not going to be wearing it, so they probably won't care how soft it is, and you might as well just stay safe and block any potential dye migration. Uh, pebble puff, yes, pebble puff can be layered. You can put it on top of something, but you can't put anything on top of pebble puff. Um, yeah, go ahead and shoot if you have a question about inkjet paper, not towards film. I'll answer at the very end. Um, okay, uh, we got a comment here. I called in. They said to use fashion film on a basketball uniform. I need premium plus. Um, so, yeah, you could use fashion film. Um, like I said, I, I kind of put my opinion there. So a lot of these products can cross over into different fabrics. Um, depending on who you talk to and their experiences, um, they may recommend something else. But in my experience and uh, from what I've seen in the testing, I think Premium Plus 
is the, the nicest and the softest. Um, but I'd probably have some customers that say, I use fashion film on day, all day on basketball jerseys, and my customers love it. And that can be true, too, because fashion film will work on that. Um, it's just I, I tend to like premium plus better. I think it's softer and is a little more pliable and stretchable. Are heat transfer materials available in the UK? Yes, you can visit Target Transfers. is a stalls company in the UK that sells the vast majority of these transfer films. Thermofilm works great for koozies. Thank you. Um, will we, will we uh, be including settings on the graph tech and other cutter, cutters we don't sell? Um, yes, uh, we can. I need to write that down as a project. Um, we have a lot of different cutters. We just need to dial them in. And, and uh, right now, we're in busy season, as I'm sure you are. Um, so I think maybe uh, after the winter here, uh, maybe first of the year, we can have that uh, done. What would you use for a tire cover? I um, guess it depends on what it's made out of, but I would probably go to uh, Premium Plus or Gorilla Grip 2 uh, because they apply at a low temperature setting and they have really good adhesive uh, qualities. Premium Plus would probably be the best because I bet that tire cover is heat sensitive. Uh, we do have a, a transfer paper for dark colored fabrics, which is called um, Inktra Opaque. It's on the transfer paper section of the website. Yes, we will include the GCC, and hopefully that covers all of your questions. One more here. I'm scared of sparkle materials now that I've ruined two garments, but I have a customer who really wants this. Could I get a sample or a very small order to try it? Um, we sell, I think, every material by the yard. If we don't sell it by the yard, we offer the sheets. Um, so you can uh, go online and, and just order a one-yard cut. Or if you just want a sample, you can call into customer service, and we have a little pre-cut sample. Uh, it's already weeded that you could apply. Um, do you cut Premium Plus names and numbers? I believe we just started uh, cutting Premium Plus. I think it was going live today where we were offering it as a service. So uh, call in and double check, but I saw an announcement where we were going to start offering that. So if not today, it should be very, very soon. All right. Thank you all for attending. Uh, appreciate everybody coming. Please answer the, the survey questions afterwards. Um, I believe we have some on there. Um, and thanks for attending. Be sure to show up on Thursday uh, for the next presentation. Take care.